लुकिंग बैक Looking forward, looking down, looking up, looking around. Join a journey of exploration to the distant past, to the frontiers of tomorrow, from the infinitely small to the infinitely large, the mysterious, the mundane. Come, let us travel to the horizons of knowledge. This program has been made possible thanks to a generous grant from. The Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, the Vodafone Egypt Foundation, the OPEC Fund for International Development, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. 2,300 years ago, Alexandria was born in this location, selected by Alexander the Great. It was built by the Ptolemies, and its lighthouse dazzled the world. And the ancient library of Alexandria nurtured the greatest adventure of the human intellect. Part academy, part research center, and part library, it welcomed the great thinkers of the age. Scientists, mathematicians, and poets from all civilizations came to study and exchange ideas. Universal knowledge was organized. Unbounded inquiry was encouraged, and intercultural dialogue was nurtured. The library completely disappeared over 1,600 years ago, but it continued to inspire scientists and scholars everywhere. And a few years ago, it came to life again. This is the story. Of this one great Egyptian project that welcomes the new century, the century of science. It is the story of the rebirth of the fabled Bibliotheca Alexandrina, the new Library of Alexandria. The world is undergoing a great science and technology-driven revolution. Towards the information society, the knowledge-based economy, and the globalized world of today. And against that background, at the dawn of the 21st century, Egypt launches the bold revival of the ancient library of Alexandria. And on the same spot, after 1,600 years of absence, the new library of Alexandria welcomes the new. Century. Let us explore the library of Alexandria today. What a magnificent building it is! Evocative, inspiring. It calls to the better angels of our nature. And the building is not only beautiful in design, but functionally it's remarkable and uh, symbolizes for all of us the notion that that information should be widely available. That information is being transmitted in a new world in a new way. Libraries are repositories of knowledge, and uh, what the ancient library and the modern library in Alexandria represent are um, sort of a uh, uh, an intense, highly valued, uh, placing a great deal of value on on the accumulation of knowledge. The Biblioteca Alexandrina, the new library of Alexandria. 
is dedicated to recapture the spirit of the original. Specifically, the new institution aspires to be the world's window on Egypt, Egypt's window on the world. A leading institution of the digital age, and above all, a center for learning, tolerance, dialogue, and understanding. At the library, we receive more than 1.4 million visitors a year. And its websites receive about 2 million hits every day. The library hosts on its premises no less than 700 events per year, from annual book fairs to exhibitions, from conferences and seminars to concerts, theater, and operas. The Biblioteca Alexandrina, or the BA as it is known, has become the meeting place for Nobel laureates, eminent figures, great intellectuals, and talented artists. I love the Biblioteca. I am inspired by it. You are very happy that I am here in the book. It is a great thing. I think this is one of the most fantastic places in the world, not only because of the historical background, but because of the courage to put something to Alexandria that kind of brings together the knowledge of the whole world. And I think if we would have more places like the Biblioteca Alexandrina uh, and uh, in, in more developing countries or emerging countries, uh, it would be good for everyone. I think uh, the idea of having such a library is one of the great ideas of humankind. Because the idea here is that we should have a place where essentially we can actually collect as much as we can of human creativity and have a repository. And that concept is a wonderful concept. Biblioteca Alexandria is of prime importance to be re-established and, uh, and spread the news again and uh, spread uh, the good uh, things, and Ismail is the right person for it. Like its illustrious predecessor, it is dedicated to advancing universal knowledge, not a single specialty. It is addressing research and applying advanced techniques to everything, from the visual arts to informatics, from documentation of heritage to the promotion of peace. I'm very, very glad that I have been uh, connected to the uh, Library of Alexandria because I consider it as a, as a token of enlightenment which is needed in this uh, period uh, in which we are now this, in this era. It is a university without walls or registration without formal certificates or structured courses. It is open to all those who seek knowledge in all its aspects and manifestations, all those who love art in all its wondrous expressions, all those who thirst after a better understanding of their heritage and of the world, all those who dream of pushing the frontiers of scientific knowledge to wherever human ingenuity will take it. The vast main library has gone from receiving its first book to over one and a half million volumes and provides over 45,000 journals to its visitors as well as extensive e-resources. The library sector also provides special training for librarians. And there are special libraries for children and for youth. Programs introduce the young to the hybrid world of the electronic and printed texts. And we take that to the schools through a mobile program called the Bookmobile. 
Special resources are deployed for the Ta Hussein Library for the Visually Impaired. And there are special libraries for multimedia and the arts, for rare books, and for microphones. A dialogue forum organizes bi-weekly discussions which encourage rationality, a civil discourse, and openness to the other. Indeed, the institution must stand for certain values. It was recognized as such when it organized the Freedom of Expression conferences. <laughs> and hosted the Beacon for Freedom database. It organized the first Arab Reform Conference, which produced the Alexandria Declaration, demanding reform in all aspects of political, economic, social, and cultural domains. And from that was produced the ongoing Arab Reform Forum, which defends and maintains these values. Subsequent meetings and publications all deepen our understanding of the fundamental values of our time and promote the involvement of the civil society. In addition, the Arab InfoMall was created to strengthen the network of Arab civil society organizations, promoting exchange of information and discussion among over 1,800 civil society organizations. But the Biblioteca Alexandrina is also about art. From the inauguration in 2002 to the Biennale of Imagining the Book and the Artist Book. From the training of talented youngsters in music and the plastic arts To the hosting of the art of the world, art permeates the institution. In addition to our galleries for temporary exhibitions, we have 15 permanent exhibitions that present amazing collections. Impressions of Alexandria, the Awad collection. The world of Shadi Abdel Salam. Arabic calligraphy, the history of Egyptian printing, the artist's book, Arab Muslim medieval instruments of astronomy and science, the ceramics of Muhaddin Hussein, a creative lifetime journey. the folkloric art collection of Raya Nimr and Abdul Ghani Abulani. The sculptures and paintings of Adam Hanin. The sculptures of Ahmad Abdul Wahab. The paintings of Hassan Suleiman. The drawings of Hamid Said. These four magnificent paintings from Sif and Adam Wanli. These beautiful pieces on a permanent sculpture exhibit, the art of Abd Salam Aid. In addition to all our art galleries, we have four museums. A museum for President Sadat, a museum for antiquities, a museum for the history of science and a museum for manuscripts. And more such collections are being planned every day. We sponsor special exhibits and musical events almost every day. We arrange open-air concerts in the summer. We even sponsored the composition of the first Egyptian opera in 40 years based on Naguib Mahfouz Miramar. And 
by bringing about documentation talents of Kaltnat staff, the musical talents of composer-conductor Sharif Mohideen and the orchestra and chorale that he conducts, and the archaeological expertise of Muhammad Saleh, we also help to bring the famous Book of the Dead to life in the first ever oratorio in the ancient Egyptian language. <laughs> and we cater to the young. Art is everywhere in our institution. For humans need art as much as they need knowledge, science and technology. Ah, but it is science and technology that is our topic today. The BA, as it is known throughout the world, is now a venue for important international science events like the biannual Biovision Alexandria. And the BA has itself become a powerful research laboratory in its own right. <laughs> في مشاريع كثيرة إنما المشروع اللي ماشي دلوقتي أكثر هو مشروع لدراسة وعلاج أمراض القلب عضلة القلب بالذات الوراثية ودي ما بحث علمي كبير بين المكتبة وبين المجموعة بتاعتنا. اللي بتحبذ في عطاءات من الشعب المصري ودي حاجة كويسة. The library has eight research institutes and there are several more being formed as I speak. It is diversified in several campuses and is eagerly pushing the boundaries in each of its chosen fields of endeavor. The Kalshurama, developed by Kaltnat, winner of many awards, now patented to prove that indeed it was the first time ever that any persons had done such a program to present a wealth of data layers where the presenter can click on an item and go on to a new level of detail. It is a remarkably informative and attractive multimedia presentation of Egypt's heritage through 5,000 years of history. The Manuscript Museum displays some of the most beautiful pieces of the Kiswate Kaaba ever seen. But to the delight of visitors, it also uses the latest technology to provide virtual browsers that allow visitors to turn the pages of rare manuscripts and see them translated before their eyes. The library is devoted to the study of the city of Alexandria and its special links to the Mediterranean. And through its Alex Med Center, not only do they document the past, but they also recreate it in 3D visualizations, such as this example of the Pharos and how it collapsed. From the start, the ambition of being a leading institution of the digital age meant more than just applying ICT to our regular work, important though that may be. With special efforts from our International School for Information Science and our ICT department, we are breaking new ground in many domains. For example, in April 2007, the Library of Congress signed an agreement to collaborate with the Library of Alexandria in designing the World Digital Library Central Hub and to maintain in Alexandria a backup copy of the materials. The BA had already pioneered many digital projects, including the digital history of modern Egypt. And with IBM, the launch of the great website eternalegypt.org. And there are many other examples, like the UNL. It is a UN-sponsored initiative for machine translation between all languages. And the library is handling the Arabic part of that project. It is an exciting venture where not only do pages reappear translated, but also Arabic text can be improved and even summarized. I love the Library of Alexandria. I think um, what you're doing to make knowledge available uh, in Egypt, 
and uh, especially what you're doing to make knowledge available by the web uh, to uh, Arabic speaking people all over all over the Arabic speaking world is is very powerful and one of the glories of the Alexandria library is that uh, while it has a deep historical tradition it also makes use of modern technology and shows that it's possible for uh, even a country that's relatively poor to be a leader in the use of this new technology a huge computing capability more than 2,800 computers spread all around the building, 400 of which are for public use, and a special supercomputer. To qualify as a supercomputer, the array must be capable of doing more than 10,000 billion calculations per second, 10 teraflops. Otherwise, it's just a large computer. 10,000 billion calculations per second. What do you need such power for? Well, for many types of problems, from bioinformatics to finite element analysis to evolutionary programming to nuclear particle analysis. All of that requires huge computing power and the library provides it to researchers. A strong analytical visualization team to work with researchers in the simulation of technical problems in a 3D virtual reality, total immersive environment called Vista. Vast storage capability. We have the privilege of maintaining the Petabox system developed by the Internet Archive of California and to maintain a copy of the Internet Archive. This single rack has huge storage capability. If you were to take one book of 300 pages and digitize it into text, that rack would hold 100 million Books. If the books had pictures and images, it could hold 12 million books. And fifth, of course, is internet connectivity. But beyond helping researchers, the Library of Alexandria also reaches out to introduce science to the public at large. The planetarium, combined with the Exploratorium and the History of Science Museum, constitute a complex dedicated to encourage the young from six years old to 22 years old as a special focus group and the public at large. We encourage them to learn the joy of discovery and the excitement of the scientific enterprise. Planetarium shows have become very popular, and this prompted the BA staff to develop their own filmmaking ability, producing The Sky of Alexandria in 2007. It was the first Arab-produced film done locally, entirely by local resources. Local talent is everywhere among young Egyptians. The annual science fair we hold brings over 20,000 young people over a three-day period. The competitions we organize show enormous promise from Aswan to Alexandria. The science clubs we organize in local schools have enormous appeal and impact. And the efforts of rejoining the past uh, takes place when we redo the Eratosthenes experiment to calculate the circumference of the Earth. And that is an annual success with students participating from many places around the world. As we know today, the day of the day, 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 مبسوطة مش بس فور فان بس جاية علشان أقارن القياس اللي إحنا بنطلعه كل سنة بالقياس بتاع العالم إراتوستينس وببقى يعني جاية يعني ببقى نفسي إن أنا أطلع قياس أقرب أو ياريت يكون هو بالقياس اللي هو طلعه. In a few short years, the BA has already made a major contribution to bringing to life the cosmopolitanism of Alexandria, which was celebrated in the centenary of the birth of the Egyptian cinema in 1907. with earlier efforts by the Brothers Lumiere, who, with their modest camera, which I'm standing next to here in the Paris Art et Métier Museum, they allow us to see Egypt as it was over a hundred years ago. And we can see it as it is today, and we can imagine it as it can be tomorrow. 
the Biblioteca Alexandrina, where we honor the past, celebrate the present, and invent the future. The new Library of Alexandria, where minds meet and borders disappear. So I think for, for me, it's a celebration of knowledge and the celeb celebration of the value of knowledge and um, a way of, of nurturing future knowledge, which is what we're going to need to adapt to the changes that are certain to come. I think that the Biblioteca is, is absolutely one of the beacons of enlightenment right now, maybe in the whole world. It is wonderful to see it come back to life in a new incarnation that is so up-to-date and so able to reach so many people uh, through modern communications technology. We have had time for only a very few examples of the many, many activities of the new Library of Alexandria. You have to come and visit for days on end to have an idea of all these projects. There are so many ongoing projects in so many areas that one can see the exciting vision of the future of science in Egypt. The new ICT technologies, the eager young minds starting on the journey of their lives, embarking towards new horizons of knowledge. Their story, the story of their budding talents is an exciting story, but that is a story for another day. I am Ismail Saragiddin, and I thank you for having joined me in this episode of Horizons. <laughs>